a new video today. Today I'm going to be doing a previous video. Actually, I think I've done three videos on rightly dividing. Um, I'm just going to put all of what I have, well, most of what I have, into one video. And I think it is an important issue. I think there is some error involved. So I know it's one of those things where not everybody believes the same things concerning rightly dividing. Now, I believe in rightly dividing, but what many people call rightly dividing is not rightly dividing. Again, I'm not going to touch every issue uh, in the rightly dividing movement, or some people call it hyper-dispensationalism, but I'm going to talk about the major points and what the scripture has to say concerning those points. For example, many of them believe that you can't use the Gospels okay, because it's for the Jews. Many of them say you can't use like Revelation, James, Peter, but many of them say you can only use Paul's epistles. So let's go ahead and take a look at uh, the Gospels and what the Bible has to say about using it or not using it and that sort of thing. Let's take a look at Luke chapter 1 verse 3. It seemed good to me also, following all things accurately, from the very first to write to you in order, most excellent Theophilus. Here, Luke says he's writing to Theophilus. We have no idea who Theophilus is. It could be, and it's likely to be, a Greek Gentile, since Theophilus is a Greek name. Now, we don't know this for certain. We certainly also don't know that Theophilus was a Hebrew. But, leaning towards him being Greek, since it is a Greek name. But we have nothing here saying that this was to a Jew. Okay? Now let's take a look what Paul himself said about the words of Jesus, which is the Gospels, right? Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, they're quoting Jesus. This is what Paul had to say. 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 3, 4, and 5. Now this is harsh. I know this is a harsh word, okay? But this is what Paul said. I'm not quoting the whole scripture. You can go and read the whole verses if you want. I have a lot of verses to read, and if you watch my videos, I often cut some of the verses, okay? 1 Timothy 6, 3. If anyone teaches otherwise and does not consent to wholesome words, those of our Lord Jesus Christ, and to the doctrine according to godliness, he is proud knowing nothing. He is sick concerning doubts and arguments, from which comes envy, strife, of men whose minds have been deprived of the truth. Paul says, you must accept and receive the words of the Lord Jesus Christ. He said this to Timothy, to the Gentiles. Okay? The words of Jesus are for godliness and we receive it okay now I know these were these were some tough words by uh, by Paul to Timothy okay Paul warns us in 2nd Timothy chapter 4 verse 3 and 4 for a time will be when they will not endure sound doctrine but they will heap up teachers to themselves according to their own lusts tickling the ear and they will turn away their ears from the truth and it will be turned to myths. Now, many of us believe we are in the end days. So, if you see something new coming into the church in the end days, you have to be suspect because Paul says things will be coming into the church new that are not of God. Now, does the Bible speak about new revelation, new truths spoken of, being proclaimed and preached in the last days? It sure does. Jesus told us in Matthew 24, 14, And this gospel of the kingdom shall be proclaimed in all the world as a witness to all nations, and then the end shall come. Jesus didn't say, oh, there's going to be a rightly dividing movement at the end of the age. No, nope. he said the gospel of the kingdom will be at the end of the age. So there is a sign. If there's something new, and it hasn't been in the church ages, you know, through, through centuries and hundreds of years, through the church age, I would highly question uh, that motive. Now, I didn't put this in my notes, but I'm also going to stick this here. I just realized the Holy Spirit brought this into memory. Now, Jesus said in 
Revelations, he hates the doctrine of the Nicolaitans. The Nicolaitans means Nike, you've heard Nike, right? Nike, laity, to overcome the laity. Now, we also know in, in church history that there were the Gnostics. They believed that some men had special knowledge. So, you have to have special knowledge concerning this rightly dividing movement to understand Scripture properly. Jesus does not like this. We don't need special knowledge to understand Scripture. Okay? All right, let's continue on with what I have here. We're going to go to 2 Timothy chapter 2, 17 and 18. And their word will eat like a gangrene, among whom are Hymenus and Philetus, hopefully I pronounced that right, who have erred concerning the truth, saying that the resurrection is already past, and who overthrow the faith of some. So back in Paul's time, there were those who were trying to take away what God's word says and what is for the church. Our resurrection is our hope. You know, the, the, the rapture is our hope. The rapture is our resurrection and going to be with the Lord Jesus and escaping the tribulation. But the point I'm trying to say here is back in his day, they were trying to take away okay, the, the heresies. The heretics were trying to take something away. The same thing here. What are they taking away? They're taking away God's word for the church. Okay? They're trying to take away. We are salt. We're here to preserve. Okay? Now, Paul also speaks about this in Romans. Romans 1, verse 18. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who suppress the truth in unrighteousness suppressing the truth <laughs> we're seeing a lot of that today aren't we a lot of suppressing the truth it's in the world it's in the church there is a suppression satan is trying to stop god's word but of course the christians receive god's word so he can't take away the god's word from the christians because they won't receive it so he's going to suppress it as much as he can oh you can't use those scriptures they're not for you no 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 not for you that's what satan's trying to do okay 2 Timothy, I know we're using a lot of Timothy here. 2 Timothy chapter 3, 16 and 17. All scripture is God-breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, correct, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfected, thoroughly furnished to every good work. Now the rightly dividers say, oh, you can use it uh, for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction. Right? That's great, that's great, but it's for those people there. But it's still doctrine. You can still use it, but it's for those people, not you. Well, Paul said, verse 17, that the man of God may be perfected, thoroughly furnished to every good work. So we in the church, the man of God, women of God, can be thoroughly perfected, thoroughly furnished to every good work. How? By all scripture. Paul said, all scripture can be used for the man of God to be perfected and to be furnished for every good work. All scripture. All scripture. That's what Paul said. These are the words of Paul. Okay. Romans 4, back to Romans. Romans 4, 23 and 24. Now the words it was credited to him were written not only for Abraham, but for us also, to whom it is to be imputed, to the ones believing on him who had raised up Jesus, our Lord, from the dead. So here Paul is quoting from the Old Testament, and he says those words in the Old Testament weren't just for Abraham. Those weren't just for the Jews. They're for you. They are for you. That's what Paul said. You going to believe Paul? You going to believe God's word? Or are you going to believe the words of heretics who are denying what Paul said? Their apostle. Revelation chapter 22, 19. And if anyone takes away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God will take away his part out of the book of life, out of the holy city, and from the things which have been written in this book. Here Jesus tells John, and John tells us, if you take away the book of Revelation from the church, you will be not denied entry into New Jerusalem. You will lose your place 
in New Jerusalem and the blessings written in this book and your name will be removed from the book of life. This is not about a loss of salvation. You think that removing the book of Revelation is going to lose your salvation? No. Nope. See my Gospel of the Kingdom video for more on that. But more deliberately, he says, what says the book of life? Here's where there's been an error in the church. The book of life isn't a list of people saved. The book of life is a list of people who are allowed in the kingdom. Who are allowed in the kingdom. Let's read that verse again so you can see the clarity of it. And again, watch my Gospel of the Kingdom video or my Book of Life video. And you can find my Book of Life video here. Revelation 22, 19. If anyone takes away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God will take away his part out of the Book of Life and out of the Holy City. If you're in the Book of Life, you get into the Holy City. Holy, Holy City, New Jerusalem. And from the things which have been written in this book, all the blessings, you know, chapters 2 and 3, the overcomers get this, get this, get this, get this. You will lose those things, your rewards, if you remove the book of Revelation. Serious stuff, folks. Serious stuff. Paul says it this way, Galatians 5, 19, 20, 21. Again, I'm, not, I'm, I'm skipping a little bit of these verses. Galatians 5, 19. Now the works of the flesh are clearly revealed. Divisions heresies and things like these that they who do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God there should be a fear of God upon anybody who's tampering with God's word and God's ways because you may be involved in heresy and be removed from the kingdom of God you're not losing your salvation you're losing your place in the kingdom of God if you are involved in heresy it's a very serious thing. Okay? And what did Paul say? He said these things are going to be at the end. At the end. Tickling the ears. Now, how many people want to hear the gospel of the kingdom? The gospel of the kingdom doesn't tickle the ears. But saying, oh, you don't need to repent. You don't need to repent. No, 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 no. That's for the Jews later. They need to repent. That's tickling the ears of the sinful Christian. They want to hear, oh, I don't have to repent. I'm saved. Oh, you're saved. But you're not making it into the kingdom. You're not making it into the kingdom. That's tickling ears. I know this is a hard message. Okay, I'm trying to do this. Jesus says, Paul says, bring correction through meekness. I'm trying to do this in meekness. Okay, it is a hard message. It is a difficult message, and I love them. We gotta, we gotta woo, woo those people back into the truth of God's word. Deuteronomy four two. You shall not add to the word which I command you, neither shall you take away from it. Taking away God's word from the church is a terrible, terrible crime. Sin. It's a sin. All right, let's, let's get into something else. Now, some people say in this rightly dividing movement, hyper-dispensationalism, that Paul was the one who preached the gospel we follow now, and that the other apostles did not teach it. Okay, let's see what Paul had to say on that. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, we'll start in verse 11, then we're going to go backwards. 1 Corinthians 15, 11. Therefore, whether it was I or they... Oh, I lost my place. 1 Corinthians 15, 11. Therefore, whether it was I or they, so we preach, and so you believed. So he said, I and they, doesn't matter who, preached, you believed. All right, let's go back and read what he said about this. 1 Corinthians 15, we'll start in verse 1. We're going to read all the way back to 11. Verse 1, And brothers, I declare to you the gospel which I preach to you, which also you have received, and which you stand, by which you also are being kept safe, if you hold fast the word which I preach to you, unless you believed in vain. For I deliver to you first of all that which I also received, that Christ died for our sins, according to the Scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day, according to the Scriptures, that he was seen by Cephas, that's Peter, then by the twelve. Afterward he was seen by over five hundred brothers at once, of whom great, the greater part remain until this present day, but also some fell asleep. Afterward, he was seen by James, then by all the apostles. And last of all, he was seen by me also, as one born out of time. For I am the least of the apostles, and I am not sufficient to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. 
but by the grace of God, I am what I am. And his grace, which was toward me, has not been without fruit. Uh, but I labored more abundantly than all of them. Yet not I, but the grace of God with me. Therefore, whether it was I or they, so we preach, and so you believed. Verse 1, And brothers, I declare to you the gospel which I preach to you. So this is a gospel he preached, but we see in 11, others preached. And what is the gospel? Verse 3 and 4, That Christ died for our sins, according to the scriptures, that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day, according to the scriptures. This is what he preached, and they. Okay, now who is they? He said they, but he did say some names and some people. So it might be some of these, all of these, but here are some of the possibilities who they are. Cephas. He listed Cephas. The twelve. This is the twelve disciples, right? James. Then by all the apostles. So the twelve could be the apostles. Could be the same group. Could be a different group. We don't know. Probably the same. And over 500 brothers. Okay? So Paul himself said, others preached this gospel. And it doesn't matter if it was I or they. Now he did say, I did it more diligently. But they still did it. Okay? Okay? Now, here's something else. Peter says that Paul's epistles are Scripture and equal to the Scripture. So the, some of the rightly dividers say, well, Peter, Peter didn't understand the gospel of Paul. But here we see Paul preach, or Peter preached it. But here in this next verse I'm going to share, Peter says Paul's epistles are Scriptures. He recognizes Paul's epistles as Scriptures. Okay, read it to me, Steve. All right, I'll read it to you. 2 Peter 3, 16. As also in all his letters, speaking in them of these things, in which are some things hard to be understood, which the unlearned and unstable pervert, hmm, are they perverting it these days? Uh, let's keep, let's can, can continue. As also they do the rest of the scriptures to their own destruction. So here Peter says, Paul's epistles are equal to the other scriptures. Peter recognized the epistles of Paul were scripture. He was not in the dark about the gospel. We saw he preached it. Paul said he did. Okay. Paul said he did. And we see that Peter recognized Paul's epistles as scripture. You may say, okay, Steve. Sure, sure. Peter preached the gospel. Fine. But Peter wasn't an apostle to the Gentiles. Hmm, what did Paul have to say about that? Let's read. Oh, before we do, what did Jesus have to say? I'm sorry, we'll get, we'll get to the Paul's one in a moment. Jesus sent all the apostles to the Gentiles. Matthew 28, 16, 18, 19, and 20. And the eleven disciples went into Galilee, to the mountain where Jesus had appointed them. And Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, All authority is given to me in heaven and in earth. Therefore, go and teach all nations. Not the Jews. Mm -mm. Well, Jews are part of all nations. But all nations, baptize, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things, whatever I command you. And behold, I am with you all days until the end of the world. Amen. Amen. So here we see Jesus tell the disciples, tell all the nations all the things you've heard me command. So here, the, the, the Gospels of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John are for the nations. He said, tell the nations all the things, all the things. Baptize them. Tell them what I said. All right. Back to Paul and what he had to say about apostleship and Peter. 1 Corinthians 3.22 Whether it is Paul or Apollos or Cephas, again, Cephas is Peter, or of the world or life or death or things present or things to come, all are yours. All are yours, Corinthians. Corinthians are Gentiles. Corinthians are the church, Gentile church. Paul said he, Apollos, and Cephas belonged to the Corinthians. Peter was an apostle. Paul was an apostle. 
And I believe Apollos was an apostle also. Not sure on that. But these three men belonged to the Corinthian church. So yes, Peter the apostle belonged to the Gentile church. By the way, it's just a church, it's not a Jewish church. It is not a Gentile church. We'll get more of that later. Now, is there really more on this? Is there really only one apostle for us? Some say, you know, Paul is the only apostle for us. Well, here I show Peter was an apostle, but Paul had more to say on this. Ephesians 4, 11, and 12. For truly he gave some to be apostles, plural, prophets, some to be evangelists, some to be pastors and teachers, for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Apostles, plural. For who? For the perfecting of the saints. Not the Jews. Well, Jews are saints. You've got to stop separating them, folks. You've got to stop separating them. The saints, the church, the body of Christ. One body. Jesus doesn't have more than one body. The saints. So Paul said that there are apostles, plural, to perfect the saints. What also did he say? Ephesians 2, 19 and 20. Now, therefore, you are no longer strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God and are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. So once again, he said apostles, plural. And by the way, he's speaking to the Gentile church. You are fellow citizens with the saints. So he's prefer referring to the saints probably in the Old Testament. Well, you're, you're a saint with them. No separation. You're a saint with them. So the church is built by apostles, plural. Not by one. Not by one man, Paul. I continue. 1 Corinthians 12, 28. And God set some in the church. Firstly, apostles, plural. Secondly, prophets. Thirdly, teachers. All right, let's get back to that Jewish Gentile thing. Galatians 3, 28, folks. Okay? Paul said this. He didn't separate them. There cannot be Jew nor Greek. There is neither bond nor free. There is no male nor female. For you are all one in Christ Jesus. Now, I didn't put this on here. But Paul speaks of other scriptures where, uh, where he says, you know, you've been grafted into the vine. Okay? Same vine. Same vine. Not a different vine. He even says, you know, those who are cut off, how more easily is it for them to be grafted back in? Same vine, folks. Same vine. We are grafted in to the same vine. Now, some will say, well, you might be right in all this, Steve, but Paul was first. He was first in the body of Christ, was he? Did Paul say that? What did Paul say? Romans 16, 7. Greet Adronicus and Junius, my kinsmen and fellow prisoners, who were of note among the apostles, who were in Christ before me. Hmm. Here Paul said these two people were in Christ before him. Adronicus and Junius. Well folks, I can't I can't take all their teachings and doctrines and and split them apart. I've I've stood stood on the the, the most important ones, that is that they're trying to take away God's word from you. Don't let it happen. We must put God's word above all else. God himself said, I put my word above my name. He said that in Psalms. I'll put the verse on the screen. Don't let Satan suppress the truth in your life. Paul told us in the last days, there will be some who come among you who will tickle ears. They're trying to tell you, you don't need to repent because that's for those Jews later, not for you. Don't let them do it. Don't let them suppress the truth. Don't let Satan take the word of God from you. And those of you involved in it, repent, because you can lose your place in the kingdom of God. Have the fear of God on you. This is dangerous stuff. I'm not talking about losing your salvation. I'm not talking about that. I'm losing your place in the kingdom of God. All right, folks, till next time, God bless. We'll see you again soon, Lord willing. Bye-bye.
hope you enjoyed this video. If you wish to keep up to date with all the videos from gospel-kingdom.com, I recommend subscribing to this YouTube channel by clicking on the gold cross sword in the pink area in the bottom right-hand corner of your screen. Thank you, have a good day, and God bless.